Good day everyone. I'm Josie Pinkular and together with my co-researchers, Almira Motalip, Wilson Sakdalan, Jamaica Tirado, and last, Marlon Valero. We are here to discuss about our quantitative research entitled Synchronous Learning and the Academic Performance of Selected Senior High School Students. Synchronous learning is one of the things that is done to enable students to continue learning and even before the new platform was created for students to learn, it helps students to progress and continue learning. But there are students who do that what we want is the same as before, which is face-to-face. -face. So we did this research to find out if it's really necessary to return face-to-face -face for students who don't all have a stable place for their study and it's stable internet for every day. The purpose of this research is to gain enough knowledge and find out the students' answer as to what exactly is the impact of online class or asynchronous and synchronous in the academic field for them. Research gap. Why do we need research gap in research? So, bakit nang pakailangan natin ng research gap sa isang research? So, as a researcher, we need this to see if there's anything important in it. It's also significant since it gives us a new perspective on things. So, mahalaga pala nang isang research gap sa isang research para malaman natin kung may mahalaga bang nakapalaw sa isang research. At mahalaga din malaman natin ang research gap para mapalawak ang kahisipan natin tungkol sa isang research gap. In terms of asynchronous and synchronous online classes, what essential insights can you take up from our research? So, may mahalaga nga ba kayong malalaman tungkol sa isang tungkol sa research namin? So, in terms of asynchronous online classes, Learners can take classes at their own pace and to learn where it's convenient for them, students' option is to of going back to the sections where they have to be up on their etiquette knowledge. A number of factors are at play, a chance to go be using materials from outside to assist in the classroom. So pag sinabi pala natin asynchronous, hawak natin yung oras natin kapag gumagawa tayo ng mga peta, project, at mga asynchronous assignment na pinapagawa ng ating mga guro at ng ating mga teacher. Hawak natin yung oras natin kapag gusto natin gumawa, kapag gusto na natin ipasa, at kapag gusto na natin gawin. Hawak natin yung oras natin at para makapag-isip pa tayo ng madami dahil lahok naman natin ang oras natin kapag during a synchronous online class. So, in terms of synchronous online class, it is feasible to do group activities because of the fact that numerous people to converse in real time with humans if you have a problem with your students. A difficult time comprehending the teachers can use the concept describe it to them. Students can learn quickly any, any answer to question they are aware of process of learning. So, students can learn quickly and answer to a question they are aware. So, pwede pala tayong magtanong sa mga ating guru during synchronous para madali tayong matuto kung hindi natin naiintindihan kung hindi natin, kung hindi natin naiintindihan ang lesson kapag natin synchronous class tayo. At mahalaga rin na synchronous class tayo dahil during universitation class nagbubus yung confidence natin at nagbe-brainstorming tayo kapag natin synchronous kapag natin synchronous class tayo. Dahil, dahil dito on the spot dahil dito on the spot yung sinasabi natin at mahalaga rin na magbubus yung confidence natin para pagdating ng pagdating ng mga bang panahon para hindi na tayo mahirapan ng marap sa maraming tao at alam na natin yung gagawin kapag maraming tao na ang maharap sa atin. At mahalaga rin na synchronous dahil lagi nga tayo nag group activities kapag synchronous para niya maging socialist kapag nakikipag-usap tayo sa ating mga classmate o guru kapag may nagtatanong tayo. And that's all for the research lab. Thank you. Sana may natutunan kayo sa research lab. We conduct this study to know the academic performance of two senior school students from Jose Abad Santos during the synchronous learning and to know if asynchronous learning is more efficient than face-to-face -face classes. Today, we will be discussing about Table 1 to Table 8. Does attending a synchronous class make you easily understand the lesson? Strongly agree, 14, 28%. Agree, 21, 42%. Disagree, 7, 14%. Strongly disagree, 0, 0%. Mean, 3.2 strongly agree. Show that 14 out of 40 of the students strongly agree that attending synchronous class make them understand easily the lesson, 28%. While 21 out of 40 students, 42% agree, while 7 out of 40 students, 14% disagree because for them, even though they attend the synchronous class, they will not easily understand the lesson because some of them prefer the face-to-face -face class. For me, more people still prefer face-to-face -face because they learn more and they understand the task better and their academic performance is better when face-to-face. -face. Let's proceed to Table 2. Students can ask questions in real time. Strongly agree, 9-18%. Agree, 
27, 54%. Disagree, 4, 8%. Strongly disagree, 0, 0%. Zero mean, 3.2 strongly agree. As you can see, 54% of the respondents agree that they can ask questions in real time, meaning they stick to the knowledge that they can take to the synchronous class. For me, many also agree that they could bring their knowledge to the same class. Table 3 Do you think synchronous is better than asynchronous? Strongly agree, 7, 14%. Agree, 26, 52%. Disagree, 8 16%. Strongly disagree, 1, 2%. Mean, 2.10 agree. Most of the respondents agree that synchronous class is better than asynchronous class because being in asynchronous class make them easily understand the lesson and can ask a question to the professor they, they don't understand the lesson. For me, so more respondents agree according to the synchronous class because they say it is better than the asynchronous class because they understand better and they can still ask their teachers. Table 4. Students feel greater sense of community and connection to their peers when they all learn together. Strongly agree, 16, 32%. Agree, 21, 42%. Disagree, 3, 6%. Strongly disagree, 0, 0%. Mean, 3.4 strongly agree. In a table 4, you can see that 21 out of 40 students, 42% respondents, agree that they can have a good connection when they all learn together because for them, being put together make them have strong bonding and have many ideas that they can share. For me, many agree that they all learn together, their work will be easier and they will also have bonding. Table 5 do you attend synchronous classes just for attendance? Strongly agree, 1, 2%. Agree, 9, 18%. Disagree, 19, 38%. Strongly disagree, 11, 22%. Mean, 2, disagree. Most of the respondents disagree with table 5. You can tell that they don't attend synchronous classes just for attendance because they want to learn so bad and have new knowledge that they can share while 18% of them agree that they just attend synchronous just for attendance. For me, many respondents disagree with number 5 because many students do not attend the same class because they would rather learn but that gain new knowledge. Table 6. Students become more engaged in their learning. Strongly agree, 7, 14%. Agree, 20, 40%. Disagree, 10, 20%. Strongly disagree, 1, 2%. Mean, 2.9 agree. Students agree that they all became engaged in their learning because they are willing to accept the new learning that we have now. While some of them disagree because they want the old learning to come back because they prefer it better than the new learning. For me, many students agree because they are willing to accept the study that we have now epidemic. Table 7. Do you always attend synchronous classes? Strongly agree, 15, 30%. Agree, 17, 34%. Disagree, 8, 16%. Strongly disagree, 0, 0%. Mean, 3.2 strongly agree. 17 out of 40 students, respondents, 34% agree that they always attend the synchronous class for the new knowledge and have a better idea when the teachers gives a task while few of them are not because they are busy with important things. For me, many students agree to take the same class so that they could learn more and increase their knowledge. Last but not the least, Table 8. Students feel a stranger sense of collaboration. Strongly agree, 6, 12%. Agree, 29, 58%. Disagree, 5, 10%. Strongly disagree, 0, 0%. Mean, 3.1 strongly agree. Respondent strongly agrees that they can feel a stronger sense of collaboration is synchronous because being active and can talk to each other makes them happy and very active because they can share and give ideas 
to each other. For me, they fully agree with the respondents that they can be better and feel stronger by working together at the same time. As you can see, the pie graph of percentage orange, 30% equivalent 80 to 84. Red, 22.5% equivalent 85 to 89. Blue, 42.5% equivalent 90 to 100. Green, 5% equivalent 75 to 79. As you can see, the most of respondent of this study, the percentage of average is most of them 90 to 100, equivalent to 42.5%. Second, 85 to 89, equivalent to 22.5%. Third, 80 to 84, equivalent 30%. Last, 75 to 79, equivalent 5%. And below, 75 is 0%. Overall percentage average is 90 to 100, equivalent 42.5%. Statement of the problem number 3. Is there any significant relationship between attending synchronous class and academic performance? So this is our hypothesis from our research. HO, there is no correlation between synchronous class and academic performance. And the other one is HA, there is a correlation between synchronous class and academic performance. So this is our data from our research. It looks like there is a correlation relationship, but we need to compute it to know if there is a correlation between synchronous class and academic performance. So let's go to our first step. This is the first step to know if there is significant relationship between your research. Our first step is you need to compute the total of x and y. Add the number on the x participant same with the number of participant y. Then put the answer below. This is our data. The first step is you need to add every each of the participant in x like 6 plus 5 plus 7. Then put below the answer. Same goes to y. You need to add every each of the participant like 85 plus 90 plus 90 and so on then put the answer below also let's move forward to the step two our second step is compute the division from the mean this is how you will do it divide the sum of the x in the number of the participant so our x sum is 244 so we have 40 participants so i need to divide 244 divided by 40 and the sum of it is i will minus it to the first participant in x 244 divided by 40 is equal to 6.1. So, 6.1 you will minus it to the first participant in x. 6 minus 6.1 is equal to negative 0 0.1. Let's repeat it to the y. The sum of y is 78. So, let's divide it to the 40 participants. So, 78 divided by 40 is equal to 1.95. 1.95, let's minus it to the first participant in y. 85 minus 1.95 is equal to 83.05 and do it to the other participants in y. Let's move forward to our third step. You need to multiply the division from the other column times the x and y in the second column and the answer we're gonna put in the third column. Then add up the answer in the column 3 and put them below. Here in second column we have x and y. We we're gonna do is multiply x to y. So here in x we have negative 0.1 and here in y we have 83.05. So we we're gonna do is negative 0.1 times 83.05. The total will be negative 8.305. Write it down, then you will repeat it to the next participant and so on. After you've done multiplying each of the participants, you need to add all of the answer and you will write it down below. Our sum product is 44.5. Let's move to the fourth step. The next step is you need to multiply the square divisions. Multiply the total in the column 2 participant in x and y by itself and put it in the fourth column after that total it. Here how you will do it. In x column 2, multiply the negative 0.1 to itself and the answer will be positive 0.01. And do the same to the rest of x. Same as y, multiply the 83.05 to itself and the answer will be 6887.3025. Then after that, add all of the came out answer in x and that will be the sum of the square of x and do it all flow to the sum of squared of y. Now let's compute the r. 
This is the formula, but let's go to the shortcut of formula so it will be easy to us to compute it. Here is the formula to find the R. And there is the basic formula. I am going to go to the basic formula so it will be easy to us to understand the computation of R. The first step is to put the right number in the formula. Then after that, we will proceed to the next step. Multiply the sum squared x to the sum squared y so the answer will be this. After that, the answer that came out, we need to find the square root. And the square root of this is this. Then now to the next step. Let's divide the sum product into the square root that came out. And after we did it, we have an r is equal to 0 0.00681. Let's proceed to the last step, which is df is equal to n minus 2. The n goes for the number of participants. And minus it to the 2, so df is equal to 40 minus 2. The answer will be df is equal to 38 and 8.05. After the computation, you can see that the table R is bigger than the R, which means that the synchronous class and academic performance is not correlation. So the answer to the top 3 is no, it has a 0% of significant relationship. Based on our computation in this research, it came out that synchronous class and academic performance is no relationship. But even though this research has no significant relationship, there are so many benefits this study can give to everyone. Again, this is Joseph Inglar together with my co-researchers Almira Mutalib, Wilson Sakdalan, Jamal Caterado, and last, Marlon Valero. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye!